important question you are afraid to ask. The first question most of you have in your mind but you are afraid to ask is, does a man like yourself have the right to control you, what you eat, what you wear, your thoughts? Does a man like yourself have right all, all in the name of spiritual gift to know your every moment 24-7, to know how much you have in your account, to know where you go, to know when you wake up, to know where you sleep, to listen to your conversation with Jesus, to listen to your prayers with Jesus, to know what you pray about, to be able to get what you're thinking about, to know your plan. Does a man like yourself have that right? The best way we can answer this question is by going to the creator himself, the almighty. And the best page in the Bible that will answer us is the book of Genesis chapter 1. When God made man and woman the bible make, made us to understand that god created all things he created the sun he created the grass he created the animal he created the fish in the sea then lastly he called forth man and he created man in his image god created man in his image and god made a statement to man in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 26 god said come let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And the Bible says God made man in his image and likeness. God first spoke the word, then man was created. That's the process of God. When God wants to do it, God will first speak the word. A virgin will give birth, then Jesus was born. God will first speak the word. Your seed will be in Egypt for 400 years and eventually the Israel, the children of Israel spent 430 years in Egypt. So God's word always precedes his action because the spirit always executes the word. So God says, let's create man in our image. And the Bible says in God's image, in, in God's image and likeness, God created them. Then God made the important statement that is answer to our question. He said, let them have dominion. Dominion means control. Dominion means subjugation. Dominion means subdue. Dominion means that something is under your control. You control it. You control it by what you say. You tell it go, it goes. You tell it come, it come. You tell it sit, it sit. That's what dominion means. It means you are in charge. You are in control. That thing is under you. It listens to you. It obeys your voice. So God said, let them have dominion. And God specified. What should they have dominion? He said, over the fish in the air, see, over the birds in the hair, and over every living creature that walketh on the face of the heart. And this is further explained if you go to Psalm 8. Psalm 8 to explains it. What area of spirit did God give to man? He said, and you put all things under him. And Psalm 8 specified those things that God placed under man, the fish, the bird, the animal, the lion, as fierce as the lion is, it was placed under man. Elephant, the snake, the serpent, everything that God created was placed under man, except man. God did not ask one man to have dominion over another man. Even in the case of Eve, when she sinned and God placed a cost on her, God said, I desire. Desire is something you yearn for. Desire is something your heart wants, something your heart pants after. It's like saying your thought is full of something. That's desire. That though you will think of your husband a lot, your thought will be filled with him, you will want to please him, you will be thinking of him, yet he will be your master. Be your master means he will lord it over you. That was a cost. That wasn't a blessing. The one that was a blessing is God said, submit ye one to another, out of reference for Christ. Submit willingly, consciously. Cost is by force. You become the person's master. In essence, the person serves you. 
He becomes your servant. He lives for your desire. He lives to do your will. But God so only submit. You are willing. The woman says, ah, I love you. And she submits. That's not where I'm going. There is nowhere in the Bible that God gave one man to have control over another man. The only time this happened is with the wicked. Slaves. And they control them completely. But that's not where I'm going. There is a evil under the sun presently whereby a man of God would know everything. When I mean everything, underline everything that members of his church is doing under the name of spiritual gifts of the spirit. They know what that person is praying about. Even in the person's bedroom, the conversation the person has in the sacred place, they hear it. They know it. They know all of his action. There is a way they communicate with the person's spirit directly and gain access to everything that is in their spirit. This is not a gift of the word of knowledge. This is not part of the revelational gift. This is pure witchcraft. This is pure abuse of spiritual gift. And I'll give you various instances in the Bible. One instance that people quote and say, this is the operation of this gift is about Elisha. The Bible spoke about Elisha that Elisha knew what the king of Syria was planning in his bedroom. But you may not know how Elisha knew, but thank God for the Bible that scripture is used to, to explain scripture. And in another, in another instant, Gehazi, Elisha told Gehazi, did my spirit not go with you? That I knew exactly what you did. But I want to ask you a question. Elijah only knew when Gehazi took the action. But before Gehazi took the action, the thought was in Gehazi's heart. Why did Elijah not know Gehazi's thought before Gehazi took the action? Then how do we know the source of information? How did Elisha knew what the king of Syria was planning in his bedroom? How did Elisha knew that Gehazi was going after Naaman? The Bible spoke about the Shumanite woman when her son died. And Gehazi came to tell Elijah. Elijah made a statement that showed us his son. He said, God had not revealed this to me. In essence, when the king Syria, God revealed it to me. What Gehazi did, God revealed him. But this instant, God has not revealed this to me. Anytime we take the spiritual gift God has given us out of the influence of the Holy Spirit, out of the control of the Holy Spirit, and we want to manipulate it for ourselves, we come into an area and call abuse of spiritual gift, and we enter into witchcraft unknowingly. What is it? Whereby we begin to lead other people by our own spirit, not by the Holy Spirit. No man has been perfected. No matter how pure or anointed the man of God is, no man has been perfected. No man is qualified to lead others strictly by the, his own spirit. The Bible told the husband that the husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church. The standard of love for the husband is Christ. The Bible told the wife that she submit to her husband as the church is submitted to Christ. Christ is the standard. A man of God is supposed to be submitted to the Spirit and through the Spirit navigate in the Spirit realm. There are various ways you can navigate in the Spirit realm. One of the ways you can navigate in the spirit realm, and that's the way the wicked navigate is, you navigate in the spirit realm through your own soul directly, through your own spirit directly, without the Holy Ghost. When you do that, 
you will come in contact with demons. The only thing that protects your spirit and your soul from demons and their manipulation is when you remain connected to the Holy Ghost and you transact in the spirit realm with the Holy Ghost. 